This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform where creatives can stand out with their online presence. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Ninets. My name is Amy and here I talk about all things knitting and today's video is a review of the Knitting for Olive book. In this video, I'll be going over what's included in this book, previewing all of the patterns that it includes, and sharing my opinions on what I think are pros and cons of the book. This is the first of what I'm hoping to be a series of book reviews, going through some different knitting books that I have in my collection, and I think it might have value and kind of a try before you buy to help you understand what's in these popular knitting books and if it's the right fit for you. Before I dive into the review, I do want to take a few moments to thank the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. I'm really excited to be partnering with Squarespace to bring you all a whole new side of Ninets with a Ninets website. Squarespace makes it really easy to create your own stunning site with professionally curated layouts and with their new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint, it's really easy to design your own website. Squarespace also has optimized SEO tools to help you get discovered fast after you launch your site so you can show up more often and grow the way that you want. If you want to create your own online presence as well, head to squarespace.com to start a free trial. Once you're ready to launch your website, head to squarespace.com slash nenits and use the code nenits to get a 10% off discount your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Now let's dive into this book. This is not the very first edition of the book. It actually was originally published in Danish and then Norwegian and the December 2023 publication was the first English translation of the book. It's currently published by Penguin Random House publishing who kindly gifted me my copy of the book. As seen on the cover, this book contains 20 patterns by the iconic Danish knitting brand Knitting for Olive. And first impressions of the book, it's a pretty beefy book. You can see it compared to my head size and look at the thickness. There are 269 pages total in this book. It's pretty heavy and it is only available in soft cover as you can see here. The cover kind of has like a satiny finish. I'm no expert on printing but it has kind of like that satiny feel while the pages have more of a matte feel, definitely more of like a printer paper feel that you definitely can write on with a pencil or pen if you want to. The covers do fold out to show some more photography and info on the book. And the book in general is a beautiful collection of photography as well as text for the patterns. As for the content of the book, it has two main sections. The first is the introduction, which shares the story of Knitting for Olive, how they were founded and how they got to where they are today. And then then the second portion of the book and the majority of the book are the knitting patterns. In the US, this book retails for 32 US dollars and is available at a lot of major retailers like Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and of course I would always recommend checking your local yarn store first as well. Now if you're unfamiliar with Knitting for Olive, I did just want to give a brief overview of the company and what they're known for. They are pretty popular in the knitting world and they are sort of self-declared an iconic knitting brand according to the cover of this book. Some of the info I'm about to share comes from both their website and some of the introduction story in the book. Knitting for Olive started as an idea in 2015 in Copenhagen, Denmark. It was a mother and daughter duo that wanted to promote the knitting patterns that they were making for children. Pernille Larsen had been creating children's knitting patterns based on timeless Danish style, and they wanted to start promoting them within a larger context of a brand. Thus, Knitting for Olive was born, and eventually from knitting patterns, they branched off into yarn, and they started out with with their knitting for olive merino which i think is known as their flagship yarn or their most popular yarn since then knitting for olive has expanded their yarn line they now carry seven different lines of yarn including merino heavy merino pure silk cotton merino soft silk mohair compatible cashmere and their newest line of yarn is no waste wool just for clarity, No Waste Wool was produced after the publication of this book, so it is not mentioned in this Knitting for Olive book at all. An interesting fact about Knitting for Olive yarns is that the majority of their fingering weight yarns are produced to the same weight and yardage, so they can be interchanged in different patterns. The book talks about how if there is a pattern that is meant for their merino, which is a 100% merino wool, but you want something maybe better suited for the summer, they recommend swapping in their pure silk, which is a warmer weather fiber at the exact same yardage and weight. 
heavy merino is exactly twice the weight of their merino so if you want to hold merino double you can easily substitute a single strand of their heavy merino they also have two second strands of yarns soft silk mohair and compatible cashmere which they also advertise as being interchangeable and a way to add a next level of softness to your fabric knitting for olive currently has two stores in denmark the first store was in fredericksburg and they recently opened a newer store in Aarhus. And and their yarn is currently available for worldwide shipping from their website and is also available at many different retailers around the world. So the first 52 pages of the book go over the Knitting for Olive story and then we dive into 20 different patterns. So let's dive into the patterns right now. As you can imagine, this is a Knitting for Olive book, so every single one of these patterns uses strictly Knitting for Olive yarn. The first pattern in the book is the Color Rain Sweater. This is a top-down raglan knit with eight strands of Knitting for Olive soft silk mohair held together in multiple colors to create this marbled ombre effect. The suggested needle size is a US 17, which is a 12 millimeter needle, and it is graded to fit bust circumferences of 33 inches to 45 and a half inches. The finished bust measurements of this pattern range from 42 and a half inches to 48 inches. The truffle sweater is a top-down raglan as well that features an all-over textured pattern. It's knit with one strand of heavy merino and two strands of soft silk mohair on US 11 or 8 millimeter needles. I would say this is an Aran weight knit and and it's graded to fit bust circumferences from 30 inches to 58 and a half inches. The finished bust circumferences of the sweater range from 45.75 inches to 72 inches. The Knitted Streets of Copenhagen sweater is a top-down drop shoulder sweater knit with two strands of heavy merino and two strands of mohair held together. The suggested needle size is a US 15 or a 10 millimeter needle, and I would say that this is a super bulky knit with that gauge and needle size. It's graded to fit bust circumferences from 30 inches to 57 inches and has a finished bust circumference of 44 inches to 57 inches. The Chunky Rib sweater is a top-down raglan sweater featuring all over rib and is knit with one strand of merino and two strands of soft silk mohair. It's knit with a six millimeter needle or a US 10 and is a bulky weight knit. It's graded to fit bust circumferences from 30 to 57 inches and the finished bust circumference ranges from 45.75 inches to 57 inches. The December hat and olive scarf is sort of a two-in-one pattern. It is counted just as one singular pattern in the book but you get two separate patterns of a matching hat and scarf set. They are both knit with one strand of merino and two strands of mohair on a US 8 or a 5 millimeter needle. This is a worsted weight knit. The hat is graded to fit head circumferences from 16 and a half to 24 inches and the scarf just comes in one size. This hat is knit from the top down and of course the scarf is knit flat. The waffle sweater is a top down raglan featuring an all over lace pattern. It's knit with three strands of soft silk mohair held together on a US 9 or 5 and a half millimeter needle. It's graded to fit bust circumferences from 30 to 58 and a half inches and the finished bust circumference ranges from 35 and a half to 60.75 inches. The Chrysler top is a tank top knit from the bottom up with knitting for all of pure silk. It's knit on a three millimeter needle, which is a US two and a half, and it's a fingering weight knit and is graded to fit bust circumferences from 27 and a half inches to 58.5 inches. The finished bust circumference ranges from 25 and a quarter to 45 inches. Olive's vest is a top down stockinette vest or slipover that features saddle shoulder details and is knit with one strand of mohair and one strand of merino. It's knit on a four and a half millimeter needle, so I'd say it's about a DK weight gauge and is graded to fit bust circumferences from 30 to 49 and a half inches. The finished bust circumferences range from 35 and a half to 47 and a half inches. The Charles Gray cardigan is a top-down drop shoulder cardigan knit with one strand of heavy merino and two strands of soft silk mohair on six and a half millimeter or US 10 and a half needles. I would say this is an Aran weight knit and it's graded to fit bust circumferences ranging from 27 and a half to 55 inches. The finished bust circumference ranges from 40 and a half to 54.25 inches. The fennel sweater is a top-down v-neck chunky rib sweater knit with one strand of heavy merino and one strand of soft silk mohair. It's knit on a 5 millimeter needle or a US 8 at a worsted weight gauge and it's graded to fit bust circumferences ranging from 30 to 57 inches. The finished bust circumference ranges from 47 and a quarter to 59 inches. It's not a sweatshirt is a top-down raglan knit with one strand of merino and one strand of soft silk
silk mohair. It's knit on four and a half millimeter needles or a US 7 at a DK weight gauge and it is graded to fit bust circumferences from 30 inches to 58 and a half inches. The finished bust circumference ranges from 37 and three quarters to 60 and three quarters inches. The Carl Johan sweater is a top-down saddle shoulder sweater that is knit with one strand of merino and one strand of soft silk mohair. It's knit on a four and a half millimeter needle or a US 7 at a DK weight gauge and fits a range of bust circumferences from 30 inches to 58 and a half inches. The finished bust circumference ranges from 35.75 inches to 54 and a quarter inches. The Carl Johan collar uses a similar top-down saddle shoulder shaping detail to knit this collar out of one strand of merino and one strand of soft silk mohair. The suggested needle size is a four millimeter or a US 6, so it's also considered a DK weight knit and comes in one size of 12 inches wide by 12 inches long. The Simple and Simple sweater is a top-down raglan sweater with deep ribbing details and is knit with one strand of merino and two strands of soft silk mohair. The suggested needle size is six millimeters or a US 10 and is considered a worsted weight knit and is graded to fit a bust circumference ranging from 30 inches to 58 and a half inches. Its finished bust circumference ranges from 36 and a half to 56 inches. The Nature Lace sweater is the pattern featured on the cover of this book and is a top-down drop shoulder all over lace pattern sweater. It's knit with one strand of heavy merino and one strand of soft silk mohair on a five millimeter needle or a US 8. It's considered a worsted weight knit and is graded to fit a bust circumference ranging from 30 inches to 57 inches. The finished bust circumference ranges from 46 and a half to 55 and a half inches. The Fredericksburg beanie is a beanie knit with one strand of merino and two strands of soft silk mohair on a five millimeter needle or a US 8. It's considered a worsted weight knit and is knit crown to crown and is graded to fit a head circumference range of 16 and a half inches to 24 inches. The Darling Wrap is a all over ribbed v-neck wrap cardigan knit with one strand of merino and one strand of soft silk mohair. It's knit on a four millimeter needle or a US 6 and is considered a DK weight knit. It's graded to fit bust circumferences ranging from 30 to 58.25 inches and is knit bottom up and has a finished bust circumference of 25 and a half to 45 and three quarters inches. The Avellea sweater, which I do not know if I'm pronouncing correctly, I tried looking it up but couldn't really find any good results online, so apologies if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but this is a top-down half fisherman's rib sweater with a saddle shoulder detail. It's knit with one strand of merino and one strand of soft silk mohair on a three and a half millimeter needle, which is a US 4. It's considered a DK weight knit and fits a bust circumference ranging from 30 inches to 58 and a quarter inches. The finished bust circumference of this sweater ranges from 41 and three quarters inches to 56 inches. The puff tee is a top-down saddle shoulder t-shirt with details including a puff sleeve. It's knit with two strands of soft silk mohair held together on a four and a half millimeter needle or a US 7 needle. It's considered a fingering weight knit and is graded to fit a bust circumference ranging from 30 inches to 58 and three quarters inches. The finished bust circumference of the puff tee ranges from 35 and three quarters inches to 59 and three quarters inches. And the last pattern in the book is the Barbro blouse, which is knit with one strand of merino. This is knit bottom up with an all over lace pattern and the sleeves are seamed at the end. It's knit on a three millimeter needle and is considered a fingering weight knit and is graded to fit bust circumferences ranging from 28 and a quarter to 65 inches. The finished bust circumference of the Barbro blouse ranges from 28 and a quarter to 56 and three quarters inches. That was a lot of information. So I wanted to just summarize a few of the key things that I took away from this collection of patterns. It is clearly a very garment heavy book that features 20 patterns and out of the 20, 10 of them are sweaters, two are cardigans or wraps, two are tees and tanks, there's one vest, one blouse, which is 16 total garments, and it leaves four remaining patterns for accessories that include the collar, the scarf, and the two hats. Now, as for the style of most of these patterns, they do follow a classic timeless Danish style that is explained in the introduction of the book. You'll notice a lot of the patterns are mostly stockinette. This is not a very texture heavy or cable heavy sweater. In fact, the only cables included in this book are in the streets of Copenhagen sweater. The rest have have some very basic repeating geometric lace patterns. The patterns I would say are written for a variety of skill levels. If you are more on the beginner side, the book does suggest starting with the simple and simple sweater, which is a top-down raglan and all stockinette that might give you a better grasp on knitting a basic sweater. And then some of the patterns like the barbell blouse and the darling wrap are probably more for advanced knitters as they are knit from the bottom up and have some advanced construction techniques. 
As for the yarn weights and the gauges in this book, there is a lot of variety as well. It does sort of range all the way down from fingering weight knits all the way up to super bulky knits. And it has kind of an even distribution. There are three fingering weight patterns. The most popular weight in this book is DK with six patterns total. The second runner up being worsted with five patterns total. So if you like knitting with five millimeter needles, four millimeter needles, this book might be a sweet spot for you because it does have a good amount of patterns with that needle size and yarn weight. There are four very similar stockinette sweaters and tees in here that I wanted to pull out and compare. Those being the It's Not a Sweatshirt, the Carl Johan sweater, the Simple and Simple sweater, and the Puff Tee. These are all top down, but they're all a little bit different. The It's Not a Sweatshirt and the Carl Johan sweater are both top down knit with DK weight, a single strand of merino and a single strand of soft silk mohair. However, It's Not a Sweatshirt is a raglan where the Carl Johan Johan sweater is a saddle shoulder construction. Now the simple and simple sweater is also a top-down raglan but it's suggested to be knit with one strand of merino and two strands of soft silk mohair making it a worsted weight knit so it's not truly the same gauge as the it's not a sweatshirt. And lastly the puff tee although looking very similar and finished style to the other sweaters has the most different construction and yarn. It's knit with two strands of soft silk mohair held together so it is considered a fingering weight knit although knit on four and a half millimeter needles to give you a very airy and blousey fabric. And this is a top-down saddle shoulder, which makes it a little bit similar to the Carl Johan, but the fabric and the yarn is a lot different. And of course, the sleeve construction as well. Now, although those four sweater patterns were very similar, the rest of the 16 patterns in the book are pretty unique. I couldn't really find many patterns that were pretty close to each other besides those four. So now let's get into my notes or pros and cons of this book. One interesting thing I noticed while flipping through the patterns in this book is the amount of strands that all of the patterns called for seemed excessive. It was a lot of holding two to three strands of mohair together. I mean, the color rain sweater needed eight strands of silk mohair held together, which would be not only really expensive, but just sounds very excessive to knit with. <laughs> a lot of the patterns don't call for just one strand of soft silk mohair held with a wool. They called for two strands of soft silk mohair, including a wool. So that was new to me. I myself have never knit a pattern with more than one strand of mohair. That being said, it might be pretty difficult to substitute yarns into patterns in this book if you're not trying to use the knitting for all of yarns, or if you don't like silk mohair, this book might not be the best for you considering that the majority of the patterns called for at least one to two strands of silk mohair. I think a lot of the DK weight patterns that are stockinette, you could get away with a single strand of DK weight wool at a cheaper price point, maybe somewhere else. But patterns like the waffle sweater with three strands of silk mohair held together might be a little bit trickier to find an appropriate substitute that gives you the same finished look that you can see here. The one thing that stood out to me the most was the very inconsistent and not size inclusive size range of these patterns in the book. You probably noticed as I was describing each of the patterns that none of them truly are graded to fit a 60 inch bust at the maximum end. An interesting thing about the patterns in this book is that they do not include a suggested amount of ease for each pattern. It instead includes two ranges. The first range being two fit bust circumference of, so your bust circumference, and then it has the actual bust circumference of the finished garment. The grading is not consistent with these sizes. For example, one thing I thought was really interesting was the simple and simple sweater. It says it's graded to fit a bust circumference of 30 inches to 58 and a half inches. However, the finished bust circumferences only range from 36 and a half inches to 56 inches, which means if you're knitting the smallest size for a 30 inch bust, you'll get a six and a half inch amount of positive ease. But if you're knitting the largest size, you're getting negative two and a half inches of positive ease, which does not make any sense to me. Other interesting notes or issues with this book is that the yarn is described in ounces. It does give the amount of balls of each knitting for all of yarn that you will need for each pattern, but if you're trying to substitute, it only gives you the amount of ounces, which you gotta plug into a calculator before you go yarn shopping to figure out how many grams you actually need. This book only references US needle sizes and inches for length. It does not reference millimeters or centimeters. And just a note is that any pattern that has some sort of texture pattern where a chart is needed. It does include the charts. However, there are no written out patterns for the charts. So you are completely dependent on chart reading. There are some publication errors with this book as well. If you Google knitting for all of book errata, you can go to their website and see the list of errors that they have since corrected online. For example, there is one pattern that is missing the legend to their chart key, but you can find that online if you need it. 
I mentioned at the beginning of this video that this book is retailing for 32 US dollars. Now, none of these patterns are exclusive to the book. You can purchase all of these patterns digitally online through the Knitting for Olive website or through Ravelry. And I was browsing on Ravelry for their price and currently all the Knitting for Olive patterns are listed at 45 Danish Krona, which is equivalent to $6.74 with the Ravelry conversion rate. Now, if you go to the Knitting for Olive website directly, their patterns are listed for five euros, which as of today, April 13th, is equivalent to $5.34 US. So it's actually cheaper to buy the digital patterns through the Knitting for Olive website. And I'm going to use that value for the value of the book. If you knit six or more patterns from this book, then purchasing the book will be a better value for you price-wise. You'll be saving money once you cross over six or more patterns. You break even at six and then your seventh pattern will be free. So overall takeaways for this book, I mean, it's obviously a gorgeous book. It has some beautiful photography and a very wide range of different patterns. If you like this style of pattern, the Scandinavian design, the simple stitches, sort of the oversized fit with garments, then I think this might be a good book for you. Also, of course, if you love knitting for all of yarns, this is a great pattern book to have as all of the patterns call for knitting for all of yarn and use them in what I would call unique ways to create some really beautiful designs. Major drawbacks of the book that might make you not want to buy it or maybe not be interested, the size ranges. They're not size inclusive and the grading is inconsistent across the sizes. I think the yarns that it calls for in each of the patterns can be a little bit funky and might make the yarn substitution kind of difficult if you're not using the called for knitting for all of yarns. And of course, if you don't like these patterns, then you're not going to be interested in purchasing the book, but that might be a given. And that's that's my review of the Knitting for Olive book. I hope this video was helpful for you to understand what's inside the book and if it's something that you might or might not want to purchase. I will link below where you can purchase this book. I hope you enjoyed this type of video. I'm looking forward to making more in the future. Let me know if you liked it and what you might want to see in future book reviews. Feel free to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of my content and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!